works? Yeah. Well, first, first, thanks for inviting me because, well, it's, it's a pleasure to have the opportunity to explain how we work, really. Today I didn't want to focus the lecture about uh, the museum, of the extension of the museum. Of course, I know that everybody's curious about what's going on with the museum, and we will speak, of course, of the museum, but I thought that was a good opportunity to explain you how we try to work in Barcelona. How we work in Barcelona, developing the buildings really abroad. That is something special, that's something a little bit different. We, we live in a place where we can't work, so we work abroad always. And try to explain you the kind of architects that we are today. We don't know exactly what kind of architects we are going to be in 10 years. Even if you live in Europe, you don't know exactly if you can be architect in 10 years, probably not. But uh, what I wanted to explain you is the process that we have developed in this almost 10 or 9 years in our office. Uh, well, one remark, important remark is uh, we, are a, we are a small office devoted to do public competitions. Uh, it's the kind of work the kind of develop our work that we have found to, to have job really. And if you do public commissions and you work abroad, you need to clarify exactly what is important for you in architecture. And this is what I'm going to try to show you. I'm going to show you five projects, and I'm going to use every project to explain you one important word for us. Five words. Almost in a chronological order. I mean, it's like this is like a small history. So I'm going to explain you the first word that we started to to manage between Fabrizio and me. Because we, we, I think it's important to to clarify that we during these ten years we have learned together to be an architect. We didn't know exactly what it meant to be architect when we started to work. And during, during these years, we, what we have been trying to do is to understand it. So, well, the first project is the first the second competition that we won. It's an open competition, a public competition, and it's aimed to do the headquarters in, of Rivera del Duero wine. It's a typical wine in Spain. It's a very traditional institution. And we won the competition to do the main headquarters in a place called in a place very close to Madrid, far from Barcelona and far from our cultural knowledge. You know? yeah, we didn't know anything about this place, we didn't know anything about this small villa. So we started to, during these months, during these years, we started to think about what it means to be specific. Because we understand that the profession will like have something specific. So we started to develop this concept at the office. Some time ago we tried to describe it, this world that for an architect as I told you it's important. Like the sense of adaptation of things to their surroundings. It's like this sense can be able to convey uh, the sense of appropriateness to something. You, know? you can say that to be a specific means to achieve the right character of a place. So in terms of architecture, to be specific would be something like to achieve what is the right character. This is an architectural school, so for us what is important is that if the architecture is a language, we are not so interested about the language, we are interested about the tone of that language, about the voice of that language. But the voice of architecture, we used to talk, to call it at the office, the voice of architecture. We are very interested about when we have to let in a conversation, when we have to be shy, when we have to scream, when we have to be uh, straight or, or not. That's why we speak about specific architecture, like the character of architecture, like the voice of architecture. What we pretend with this is to explain that for us, the architecture, of course, is the place where it is. The 
context is the place where it is, and architecture is the place where it is. But at the same time, what we want to do is to go beyond this, trying to become not just specific of the context. We want the solar buildings, we want to be essence of reflection of the place. Then we will reflect about these rules. But to be to achieve the essence of the reflection of the place is very important for us. Because it's linked directly with the idea of character and linked directly with the idea of context. When we speak about specificity and about context, we don't speak just about the physical context, we don't speak just about the tradition or the history. We are looking for something more involving, something that permits you to go beyond that. We are more linked with, not just with your background, we are more linked with the culture, with the atmosphere, with something that you can feel in the place. Again, that work in the character of the place. So we started to talk about this when we started to do competitions. And we won, as I told you, this competition in Roa. Roa is in a small village. It's a very small village in a very beautiful <coughs> landscape, um, but confront with a terrible urbanism. So we had to do the extension of a old brick substance, an existing offices, and we have to decide what we can uh, do, like architects living in Barcelona in this place, what we could offer to this place. So we started to reflect about this. We started to reflect about how we could solve this, this problem. It's a, it's a project of a small scale, it's not a huge project. We, but we had to work with the context in this sense, as I told you, in terms of character, not just in terms of materiality, not just in terms of program, not just in terms of, of course, we could speak. We, we, I can explain the project telling you how to solve a wall, a neighbor, how to solve the wall with the with, with of the existing building, how to solve the pre-existing of the old church that we have there. The project solves the immediate surroundings, the immediate context, the physical context. But it was that was not enough for us. We wanted to solve the problem of the general character of the place. Of course, we decided to work with local materials. We decided to filter the landscape that we had in front of us, in this, this flat landscape that we had in front of us, in order to achieve this idea of character, as I told you before. But then we, we knew that it was not enough even with that, because to filter the vision is something that have all the elements to do, to feel the direction of your architecture. But we decided to work with the memory of the people to using this traditional typology, like the tower in Castilla, close to Madrid. Everybody has fixed on their, on their minds this idea of the towers, the castles, the towers. So to work with these elements, these archetypes, permits you, in our case, permitted us to investigate this idea of character, or to be specific what it means to be specific in this place, to work with these archetypes, to work with the material, to work with the color even in this place. That's why we tried to, we decided to organize the project around this tower, something fixed in the memory of everybody. And it's, that is the reason because we decided to separate even the program, putting the private program on the tower, put in the public program at the basement and at the public square, and solving then the small problems with the, with the physical context. So what we tried to, to do was just amplify the idea of the specific and investigate ourselves what was this world for us, to be specific. This is the vision of the, of, of the main ensemble the old existing building, the old entrance to the church that we have here in front of us, and then these small pieces that works like a skylight and works 
in the way, in a way, to solve the small problems, to solve the small scale of the building. But this is something that you always have to do. But we needed to go beyond these, these problems. We needed to go further. Today, uh, then of course, if you have some questions, I can explain you more in a more detailed way how the the, 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 the prize works. No, but I'm not so interested about to tell to explain you the, the program or how other celebrations. I'm more interested about to explain you about this general concept. <coughs> this is the, the public square, the main staircases, the skylights, the element of the tower that is the traditional element that everybody can fix in their minds, how the ensemble works, the decision of separate the public, the public uh, program and the private program, but just everything done with this idea of achieve the character. And I mean, this idea, for example, was the idea that permitted us to decide to generate this public square, because the character of the place in, in our aim here was to filter this landscape and filter this public, this small product, through this <coughs> main decision. The, the landscape, the tower, to filter it and through the material and through the archetype to be essence or reflection of the place. Because the essence of this place, their memories, are uh, these elements like the tower and the essence and the reflection is to filter the landscape through your architecture. So, it's the first concept that appeared in our office, mainly, because we knew that if we wanted to be architects working abroad, we knew to develop this idea of being specific. The second project that I'm going to show you is really the second building that we have built. We haven't built too much buildings, really. It's, well, all the artists like to tell that they are young. You know, you, even if you live in Spain, you can be in your 50s and you can tell that you are a young artist. You know. But now we are almost in our 40s and we haven't built too much buildings. This was our second building, who was an auditorium in the south of Spain, in, in Nagras. And for us, it was a huge addition. Because the program was huge, it was an auditorium. You must know that um, in Spain, the last 10 years, we have built a lot. Almost every place, more than 50,000 people have their own auditorium, museum, and we won all these competitions in South Spain. And we were very young when we won the competition, so. Uh, we started to discuss, well, at least we started to reflect about another word that now is very important for us, that is in English, essentiality. Because we want it to be essential. That sounds a little pretentious, perhaps. But what it means for us to be essential? We like, we do projects now, we like to reduce the expressive gestures to the minimum. Now we try to solve things in a very simple way. Not because we are a sort of minimalist target. We are not minimalist. We don't want to be minimalist. What we want to do is to do clear and simple architectures. We want to do this clear and simple architecture. We want, we want to condense the strength of a project in a period few movements, really. Like then in, in Kur, for example, we, we, we tried to do the same, or in Lausanne, we tried to do the same. And we started to, 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 to discuss about this with this project in, in, in Ireland. So we believe, perhaps here in Switzerland, the vision is a little bit different, but if you live in Spain or in Italy, after the last 10, 15 years, we decided to forget these years. We decided to start from a degree zero. I mean, try to come back to the fundamentals of the, of the architecture. Try to forget the trappings of the past. Try to forget all the excess of the 
past and try to understand again what it means to be essential. In this sense, nowadays, today at the office, you know, what we are trying to do is try to go towards, uh, if you permit me to express you, try to go to a kind of primitivism. You know, we are trying to, to look for this idea of primitivism. Conceiving this as a research between the essential and the fundamental of the discipline. Because finally, there is a sentence that we like a lot, a sentence by William Carlos Williams, that expressed the necessity of the ideas and things. I mean, we just look for ideas and things. And that's why we are trying to be essential. When we won this competition in Spain, we were very lucky because, like in Roa, we were in front of an incredible landscape, just in front of the sea, <coughs> facing to the south of the Mediterranean Sea, in an incredible place, but with a terrible, again, a terrible urbanism at our back. Aguilas is the most wonderful place with the <coughs> most terrible urbanism that you can imagine. You have to have on their mind, your minds these visions of the Mediterranean coast in Spain. So, well, first here we, we had to take a decision. I mean, when you are architect, I mean, well, I will be speaking in front of a lot of architects, so I'm going to tell you my, my vision. Of course, any one of you can have different visions. When you are active, you can solve all the answers that you used to do during the process. You can answer everything. And you have to take decisions. When we did spray, we take the decisions to be responsible, to be responsible with the landscape, but not be so responsible with, with the context, with this physical context that I spoke before. Because it was not possible to solve it. It was not possible to be respectful of the context. We decided don't be respectful with something that is a mess and that you can solve. So we decided to work in a sensible way, solving the problems with the landscape, solving the problems, not the problems, solving the relation of the people with essential things. With the light, with the movement of the sea, and with the shadow. These three simple ideas were the base of this project. And then another concept that we have been trying to develop during the last years is this idea of geometry. You have to imagine that we, we had a huge budget here to do this project, really. Because we are, when we did this project, we were rich in Spain. We had a huge, a huge uh, budget. And we were jammed, so the first drawings were drawings with a lot of things because we, we tried to do all what we knew. I mean, <laughs> we tried to do everything. We tried to mix a lot of materials, we tried to mix a lot of forms, a lot of, we did a lot of investigations during the competition, trying to be very expressive, very good architects, you know, because we, we had a lot of things in our minds. But we decided to forget all these things, and we decided to transmit just the idea to a simple but very expressive architecture in a very simple way, in a context <coughs> that is characterized by the sea, by the curves of the base, by the shadow, and by the light. And to work just with those elements. And integrate these elements even at the, in the geometry of, of, of the building. Because we wanted to introduce a reflection of the people inside the building, to reflect, reflect about the movement, for example, <coughs> to reflect about why this architect has introduced a curve inside and perhaps to link this curve with the curve that they have at the bay in front of them every day. But the, the program is a very simple program. It's a program for it's an, an auditorium for 700 people and another auditorium for 300 people. So we started to work with these simple characters, two spheres, and one column at the basement. We started to work with another concept that I later am going to try to explain, the idea of public, public space, and transmit this, again, filtering, filtering your vision of the architecture, your vision of the local tradition, how 
how to build in the south of Spain a contemporary architecture like this, using traditional, even using traditional solutions, but filtering everything through this idea of essentiality. And transmitting this even at the interior of the building. Of course, to build in front of the sea can be too obvious, you know, because everybody, I mean, it's like here, everybody here has in their minds the mountains. You don't need to show the mountains to the people again. You have your eyes full of mountains. And in Angulas, everybody has their eyes full of sea. But it was important to filter this vision in terms of show about this essential movement of the sea, how the sense of movement of the light, how the materials are working here, how the, 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 the important elements of the city are framed by the windows, always reflecting about this idea of the essential. Because we didn't want to do uh, an expressive auditory in Angulas just through the materials, through more expensive solutions. And transmit this idea even of the interior, in contrast with the exterior of the public spaces. Try to solve the, the complex machine of this auditorium with a gentle, simple gesture, just with a cube, a black cube that can work in very different ways. And just confronting the vision of the interior shape, this black rock, this black stone inside. Contrasting this idea with the idea of light outside. How the shadow works with the light from the south. How to confront a flat wall with a curved wall. How to introduce the doubt at the visitor. Because something that we are looking now is trying to to use your buildings to permit the reflection of the people too. This is something very interesting for us. I can't explain my, our buildings to everybody, but what I want to do is introduce this idea of reflect about the space where I am, and reflect about the kind of why this is solved in this way or not. This is something that we try to investigate in this building, and this is something that we started to investigate because of this idea of that nowadays is very important for us. The third building and the third world make sense in, in Stechin. Stechin is a place uh, very close to, to Berlin, it's in the south of Bavaria, in Poland. And we won this competition six years ago, seven years ago. And we went on this competition, we didn't know anything about Poland, about staging of course. We, we used to go to the places where we do the competitions. That's, that's, that's true. We, when we do the competition, we like to spend three or four days on the place, trying to understand something. But of course, it's, that's not enough. It's, it's, it's just a tourist visit, this is not enough. And when we did this competition, it uh, was another open competition, we came back to the world context. We started to work to speak about this idea of specificity. And when we did this, this competition, we came back to this idea of what means the context for us. It's just the physical context, it's just the memory, it's just the history, it's more linked with the character. But Sometimes for your projects, in our case for our projects, to solve these relations with the context, even it's not enough. It's not enough to the kind of architecture that you are looking for. So what means the context for us today? We're not sure really about what means the context. Even when we are in the school, so we are not sure if still the context exists because everything is changing so fast everywhere. Um, you don't know, you are not sure about the context where you are working every day. And we are not sure if the, if the context is still an engine for a language like this 
architectonic or architectural language that we spoke before. We could say that for us, geography or really has the same meaning. It has the same importance. It's the base that we are going to use to build something. What are interested are very interested with the idea of context is to discover the unexpected. What means the unexpected? Um, what we like is to reflect about the idea of essence, okay, about its character, but to discover something that permits you to, to take your architecture farther. I want to try to explain it with, uh, with images. Well, the was, again, we were, I have to tell you that we are a very likely architects because to do a philharmony is like to do a cathedral. It's something that you perhaps, I'm conscious now that perhaps I'm doing the most important things in my architectural life nowadays because to do a philharmony, it's, as I told you, is like to do a cathedral, like to do a museum, something that happens perhaps once in your life. We were lucky because in Poland they still have this tradition of classical music, so they wanted to do a film. In a city where, like, staging that is trying to reinvent its own personality it was an industrial city, now they are trying to reconvert the city in a cultural city, so they were looking for a building that could transmit this idea of starting point for something new. So we want the competition to do the philharmony. And of course we we with a, this tourist vision that we had, we understood uh, okay, we are working in a place with this Germanic tradition of architecture, these vertical elements. We can work with the physical context that is surrounding us with the trees. We can work in with this, this cathedral, the idea of the castle and the background. We can work with this, with this element. But we, we felt that was perhaps not enough for the kind of building that we would like to do. And of course I can explain this building reflecting about how to compose something. The, the building really is very simple, it's, it's just a like this idea of a composition is to mix a simple element influenced by the architecture of the surroundings, a very typical roof, a vertical element that is composed in a very simple way, like a composition, and that permits you to understand the building like a kind of ensemble, like, a, like an instrument. This would be a simple description about the geometry of this building. But we wanted to link it with something that would permit us to develop something, you permit me to express of something better. So we started to think about the cultural context, about this idea of expressionism, about this cultural movement of expressionism crossing this part of Europe during so many years, and how to introduce it in the building, inside the building. And we started to imagine perhaps that we could use this idea of expressions. That was something unexpected for us when we started to work. And how to translate this inside the building, how to transmit this idea inside the building. Outside, of course, the building is, as I told you, it's very simple. Well, these are the renderings from... I'm going to show you some pictures from the building. It's close to the end of this building. It is not ended by the moment. We are going to need still three, four, five months perhaps, but it's close to the end. This is where the renderings, these vertical elements done with glass and aluminium. Then during the night working another way, of course, because this works like a Japanese light. And then because, of course, it's a new regeneration of this area, of course, it's a new... I'm going to talk the work, it's a, it's, a, it's a risk, it's a new icon. For, for the place, but we didn't want to achieve an icon. We just wanted to achieve a simple, expressive, and a specific element for this place. Well, this is the image of the building site one month ago. But linking with this idea of the expressionism, 
we started not with the plans, not with the section, because the plans, I mean, are very simple. It's just how to organize this complex program, but finally very restricted. How to put the locker rooms, how to organize the movement around the building is something that, it's, in terms of use, it's very easy, it's very clear. We didn't want to to investigate about the typology of the console hall, for example, we have used a classical typology, two by one, like the music Burnside in Vienna or the Rapsa de Gabo in, in Amsterdam. It's, it's the same proportion. We wanted to express ourselves through this idea of culture that's crossing Europe, this idea of expression, this idea of how to introduce this, not just outside how to introduce this even inside. This was a model that we did for the combination of the false ceiling. But then inside, how to work with this idea? Why? First, because to discover this idea of the unexpected or the unthought of. Second, because it's in a special place, it's a place for live music. And third, because it's a place where you have to feel special every time you go to the, to the play. And this was linked with a cultural tradition, this was linked with a, something that goes beyond the idea of context. This is what... Well, the picture is very bad, because I'm very bad photographer, but it's more or less the, the general vision of the main also. <clears throat> the fourth, fourth world really not appeared with this project because it was something that is a concept that we have been trying to clarify in our office during the last years. And appeared, but it's a good summer. It's the competition that we won in Lausanne. Almost three years ago, before, before to win the competition coup. And when we did this competition, we started to discuss about the word public. But what means public for us? As I told you before, we do public competitions. So um, our responsibility is to reflect about this, this word public. And when we do architecture, this means to look to the city, basically. First, well, I have to explain you, when we arrived to Lausanne again, we didn't know anything about Lausanne. Well, Lausanne well, you have the vision of Lausanne, something that you see on the TV, television, the typical vision of the lake. But we didn't know anything really about the space. Um, but we discovered that really, you, you have to imagine this, this first meeting with 15 teams, 12 teams of architects, most of them Swiss architects and with a mix of architects from abroad. We were one of the architects from abroad. And we went, this is the train station, this place here, and the site was the old factory to the maintenance of the trains, just at the downtown of Rosanna. And we were, when we had this visit, we discovered that we, anybody knew anything about this place. Anybody knew anything, because this was a closed space at the downtown of Rosanna. So our first reaction was that we were really happy, because we were at the same conditions as the rest of the teams, because anybody knew what to do here, and everybody knew why the captain wants to put a museum just close to the trains. Because it was something strange when we started to talk about this. But we... Well, I'm going to use perhaps this, this, this slide. Uh, this was our... <coughs> In this moment was our main, main competition. I mean, we were invited like jam architects, but we 
and uh, we were competing with a lot of big names. You know. So during the first three months, more or less, we, we, we need a lot of time to do competitions. We don't do too much competitions every year. We perhaps do three, four competitions, no more than three competitions perhaps. So during three months, we were trying to do the best building that we could, really. Because the, one of the conditions of the brief was to keep the existing building. This was one of the conditions of the brief that the client sent us. So you have to imagine all this. We have a lot of models at, at the office trying to be, trying to do the most expressive uh, essential, expressive, uh, specific building that you can imagine using the existing building. And we were close to, to, to decide to do one of the options that was, was a mix between a Herzog and a Beverly building, putting something in all above this, this brick system, and a mix of, I mean, kind of Spanish architecture. <laughs> uh, but uh, really we understood that Paris would be a good museum, but would be a, a wrong place for this museum. Because if you see this image, what was clear for us was that the most important thing here was not to do a good museum, was to do a good city. So we decided to forget all the models, all the schemes, and we started to reflect about what means to do city, a city, what means to do a public space. So we decided to forget the brief and we decided to just to generate a square. And a square for these three buildings, yeah, well, the, the large element is, is the <coughs> Fine Arts Museum and then the competition pro was a proposal for a master plan for other two small museums, the MUDAC <coughs> and Le Lycée, a photograph museum and, and and arts decorative museum. So we forgot the buildings really. We just proposed simple buildings with the excuse of build and square. Why? Because now nowadays, today, we are we prefer really to achieve not iconic buildings, but to achieve achieve, if you may express me again, iconic words. If you ask me today, what do you prefer? I would prefer to achieve an iconic void, an iconic building, being architect today. So we started to work with this, this element. This, these are our images from the competition. Are very clear, very straight. I mean, the rendering is it's a little bit hard, but it's just because to focus the importance of the void and not the importance of the the building was just an excuse for us here. Because what is important here is to protect this space, this public space, to use the museum like a wall, like a filter, permits you to achieve a good space there for the people, for the city. Because to be architect for us today means to look back to the city for us, to reflect about the public space. And nowadays, we used to work in every competition, in every project. Most of the times we start thinking about this idea of public. When we did CUR, we, then we, we will speak about CUR, but when we did CUR, we started the project thinking about the public space and not thinking about the museum. And this is, we do this today because, perhaps because well, perhaps because we were so successful here, but perhaps because we realized that it was most powerful to think about the city always than to think about your architecture. This is why we started to work with the city of public. And then because perhaps if you think about public architecture, you can achieve the way to build places or artificial landscapes more than objects, because finally a building is just an object and it's not a place. And thinking about the city, you can achieve places and landscapes. 
The building is solved in a very, again, I'm going to use the words that I have explained you before, in a very simple way. It's, I, I'm not sure if it isn't a lot of essence on reflection, but it's just all like a wall open to the public space, working with the fundamentals of, the, of, the, of, the, of this profession, working with elements to open the main spaces to the public space, to use the scale, to use the light, how to work with the proportion of the square. The square, even we, we, we haven't been so original with the square, it's the same proportion that the Uffizi in Florence. So we, even we use this, re with this reference. So we didn't invent anything here. So we try to work with these fundamentals. Well, sorry, because the drawing is very, very bad. Trying to solve the problem with the scale, protecting the museum from the trains, protecting the city from the trains. But we introduce something unexpected again. That was how to fight with this idea of the, existence, the pre existence. So we decided to work with the idea, not with the physical pre existence, to work with the memory. Because we thought that was most powerful to work with the memory of the, of the place than to work with the physical pre existence. So we decided to keep some elements of the old building in order to reflect about this old building, but in order to use it like, then we come back here, in order to use it like a starting point of something. This is the persistent facing to the south that finally is, is the same starting point for the new main entrance. So we decided to work with a few elements that could transmit this idea of memory inside the building. Again, working inside with the same elements that in Aguilas, for example, with this idea of materiality used like a monolithic space that you can... I don't, I don't know the English word, cave, no? That, that you can work inside in, in a more three-dimensional way. But reflecting always about this pre-existence. Outside is just a square. It's just a square linked to the train station. Work it like, like a traditional public space with something on the back, something on your side protecting you, giving you proportion, opening the as I told you, opening the main the main spaces, the main public spaces to the public spaces on the other side, and then filtering everything with a simple architecture. Link it with this industrial architecture that we have here. The material, the bricks, for example, why do you use bricks for is something that is linked to the side, is something that is linked with this idea of industry that we we have here. And this is why we try to to discover here. Inside, again, we didn't try to propose a new typology for a museum. In, uh, the typology of museum is very, I mean, we didn't want to, to go farther with the scheme. We just wanted to achieve the best exhibition space like a machine, in this case for Lausanne, and in here in Kure, it's in the same system. Because finally we are not the main actors here. The main actor inside are the artworks, are the exhibitions. So that's why the architecture inside is so simple. Because we are just the background. We didn't want them to be the main, the main actors. We are the secondary actors here. So the attitude here inside even is just to be the background for the artwork. Because there is a reflection about a museum that is important for us. Then a museum is a place where, nowadays, in my opinion, a museum is a place where people go to discover questions. It's a place where you have to ask questions to people, perhaps without answers. And the architecture is not a, it's not a question. The architecture 
the museum itself is just the background for these questions. That's why we, when we do this kind of competitions, we try to be very, very neutral with, with, with the architecture in terms of museographic uh, forms, because we are just background. Oh, the program is bigger than poor, of course. It's, 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 it's big as the museum. It's well, it's bigger, but the the elements are solved in. in they are very similar, similar way. But the difference is natural light, perhaps. <laughs> and the fifth, uh, the fifth project of the fifth world, well, it's not a word, it's, it's, an, it's something, it's an expression, perhaps, <laughs> appeared with the Bundan Cruz Museum. So I promise you that in a couple of years I would be able to tell something in Swiss German, but by the moment <laughs> I can't and my accent is terrible. But uh, we did this competition after Rosan. And we when we started to work with this competition, we were working like again telling you the truth, three or four months about this competition. And again Lausanne was important for us, Kuro was even more important for us because if you come from Spain, the idea of architecture in Kuro, it's, I mean, it's like you, I'm not going to do a joke, it's like you, you are in Basel and you go to play football to Barcelona, I mean, you go to, uh, <laughs> or you go to play football to Brazil, no? for us it was, I mean, we were, everybody did, were working in this company because for us was uh, we, we didn't expect to win the competition. But what we wanted to, to do is to compare our architecture with the architecture that the people here were, were doing. Because for us it was always a, a if you go to our office you can see books from everybody that is now working in Cork. <laughs> but, but we did this competition here. Um, we start to reflect about something. Well, I don't know if the translation. We had doubts in at the office about the translation in German, but well, the idea would be specificity versus autonomy. No. I told you that the first word was specificity. We have reflect about this idea: specificity, character, character, uh, essence, reflection of the place. But even, I mean, confronting the architecture that we do with other architecture that we like, other architecture that we respect a lot, we have the feeling today that it's not enough here. We want to go again, we want to go farther. We want to propose something that can solve problems, not just with this idea of specificity or essentiality. We want to achieve something you permit me to express them, something better. And this would be the idea of autonomy. Or this would be the idea of um, universality. Because the central theme, perhaps, or the, trend, the central subject for us today is the search of, of some possible balance between the specificity of a place and the autonomy of the form. This is a classical problem in architecture. How to do something specific, but how to be autonomous. No, this is, this is not, nothing new. But this is something that we are reflecting now. And we started to reflect it with this project, perhaps. I'm going to write a, a small text. Our place always starts from the existing. The specificity of a place and the case of reality that we try to condense into an autonomous architecture throughout a detailed and precise work. With this, we pretend to say that each of our architectures strives to be universal architecture, that starting from casual conditions, <coughs> from the precise, becomes something with a meaningful whole. We are looking for an architecture with a meaningful whole by itself. For us, the design means fluctuate within this border of land, and considering this dichotomy, 
also means to reduce the contradictions to something belonging to a higher order. Reduce them to an inseparable whole. To design means giving a sense to a work that speaks of the character of the place, of the small, the specific, the unique, imprecise and uncertain. Nevertheless, it also means being able to generate architectures with a sense by themselves, consequently universal and autonomous architectures. And I'm going to do a comparison, for example. We like uh, this comparison with impressionist painters. You, know, you have to have in your mind Paul Cézanne, for example, or any, any impressionist painter. Painting all with the same landscape, but they're all small pieces. With, with, with when Paul Cézanne was painting all with the same landscape, was not reflecting about local answers, uh, local questions, or local problems. He was thinking about universal. He was trying to transmit something universal that could be understood outside the village, but could be understood farther. Somehow. What we try to do with our architecture, or what we would like to do with our architecture, is to achieve something similar. To transmit this idea of universality through the architecture that we are proposing. Of course, solving the problems of the context, the specificity, the sincerity of things, but trying to go again further. Well, I mean, I'm going to explain in a more detailed way the, the, the Pride of Cora, then we come back to this idea of universality or autonomy. Um, when we started to, to work with the competition, we had the persistence of the planta. This, I mean, when, I have to tell you the truth, the first time I arrived to Kuru was I was shocked because of the vision in the middle of Kuru of this uh, orientalistic villa with these sequoias surrounding the villa, this huge garden, this incredible garden at the middle of Kuru. It was a very impressive vision of the place. So we had the existing of this element, we started to work with this element. And we had the red lines is the, the shape of the area that we could use to, to propose the, the, the to use for, for for the competition. But for us, we didn't start to work with this line really. We started to work with the garden. Now nowadays, if somebody asks me for me to me, what's the more important reference or key point that this project was really for me is the garden. What makes special this building is the museum, the museum of Kuru, are of course its surroundings, the idea of garden. But I'm not sure, but when the owner did La Planta, he gave the same importance to the villa than to the garden. So we tried to keep that idea with the extension. So we decided to, these are the drawings for the competition, we decided to use the elements that we had in front of us. The garden, the idea of geometry, because, well, Villa Planta is just a reinterpretation of a uh, Palladian villa. You know? Could be linked with uh, Villa Rotonda, or for example, the same scheme, a little bit deformed, but it could be linked directly to a to a villa. So we started to work with this idea of geometry to link the product to something that goes farther than the, con the immediate context, the physical context. We started to work with the idea of the garden, putting in our minds that we should keep the garden as much as we could. That was very important for us from the beginning. And again, working with the unexpected, that was the idea of ornament. We didn't expect to work with the ornament of something. Because we had in their minds the idea of Swiss architecture uh, that in the last year are not focused on this idea of ornament. So this was the perspective in this competition, in this project. <coughs> so what we try
tried to do was to filter these three concepts and again using the brief of the competition to put these three elements in a place where we thought that was more important. And we had to take some decisions, again, like in Agnes. We had to take the decisions to do the museum underground, for example. It was strange when we did it. I mean, when we proposed the first scheme at the office, we thought that we started to laugh, really, because we, we thought it's impossible to win a competition putting the whole, uh, the whole museum underground. They are going to think that we are crazy and put in the private spaces at the outside of the building. Nobody's going to understand why we are doing this. But we decided to do it because it was the very useful to use the idea of proportion, the idea of scale that was very important for us in order to keep the relationship with Villa Planta um, and with our the RHB neighbor. The proportion with the idea of the trees, the scale of their forlandness, we were looking to achieve a, an element that could, could keep this idea of scale. And because this would permit us to keep the idea of the garden surrounding our building, uh, surrounding the extension. The geometry, the geometry could permit, wasn't very useful when we started the work with this idea because it would permit to link in a higher level our building at the extension with Villa Planta, but would permit to, to give an autonomy to the, to the extension. We wanted to achieve a building with an autonomy but with respect to Villa Planta. So to use this simple, this simple architecture, this simple proportion, was useful to, do, to achieve this. And they introduced the unexpected that was the idea of ornament. And why this, this ornament? Because it's not linked with the local tradition. We, we didn't achieve a local tradition that perhaps would permit us to develop a, a concrete element with, with, in the way that we wanted to use it. But we used the skills of the ornament in terms of develop an expressive element in a simple way. So we started to work with this with this with these volumes that would permit to reflect about why Villa Planta is so ornamental and why the extension is so ornamental too. Would permit to start the reflection about the buildings and about what it means to be an extension. And we thought that was not just useful, it was the key point, perhaps, to, to express the identity of the building. Then the building is, is working with, with very simple elements. The entrance, what means to do an entrance? Just to, in a small building, the idea was to reinforce the idea of the door. You are entering an special <coughs> space, so we developed this idea of the door in a very expressive way, too. very simple but very, ex very expressive. I think. And then the openings. Well, these were from the competition, the underground mission, the three levels that we had before and we still have uh, developed in another way, but in the middle, the main foyer. The main foyer that Again, we were doing the, the competition, but we knew that we were doing an extension. We were not doing a building from the, from the, from the scratch. We, we were not the main actors here. The main actor is Villa Planta. And we decided to, to filter the vision of Villa Planta, like in Agilas. It's the same vision that we did in, in, in the auditorium, for example. How to frame the sea, and here how to frame Villa Planta and how to frame the garden and how to reflect and look for the essence of this place. So we decided just to, to, to express the main space of the building with this element of the building. So somehow we tried to be essential, not because that was my telling you the truth again. Of course, when we did this, we, we knew that we were working in, in Grabun and in Kuru. Right? So we knew that, for example, to, to use the concrete would be very, very easy for us. I, I 
couldn't do this in Spain, for example, with concrete, because it would be impossible to achieve this, this kind of expressive element. Or, or, I mean, you have in mind all these this local elements, but the most important thing, is, thing was to, to frame and to reflect about the persistence. Again, to, to work it somehow with this idea of filter something from the architecture. When you see the drawings, when you see the plants, everybody, everything is linked to Villa Planta through the geometry. The idea of work with these two cores is where we place the staircases and the elevators. Working with the axis of Villa Planta, this was the, the main axis through the staircase, taking you underground. Underground to work with this pure element, this square surface that is linked again with the kind of spaces that you are going to achieve, uh, you are going to discover then in Villa Planta. Somehow these, these elements are not visible when you are a, visit, a normal visitor, when you go to a building. But I hope that in a normal visit you can reflect about this. You are crossing the spaces with the same proportion, with the same way of understanding the architecture that then you are going to discover at the basement. So that's why we thought that to work with, that, with the geometry here was important for us and to work with this street meaning of the square with the, with the plants. The second level, working in the same way, was an open space devoted to the temporary exhibition, but was again this, this empty, empty exhibition space with intention just to achieve the best exhibition space that we could underground. Because again here the intention is not to be very expressive with a kind of this is something that we we have discovered during the process for example. The first thing that one wow, of these first visions that we showed to 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 the user, to the client was to 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 do these exhibition spaces with concrete. So, we had a discussion about this, and um, this permit, me, permit us to discuss and to reflect on the office that we were not the main actors in this space. So we had to achieve the best background again, like in Nusan, to the artworks. So we renounced to, this, uh, to that idea to, transfer, to, to do everything with concrete inside, because in this case, this achieved this machine for an exhibition was more important than the expression of something that we had in mind. So inside, this would be one of the <coughs> permanent exhibition spaces. What we have tried to solve is this exhibition space with the best, uh, I, the best lighting solution that we could achieve. This worked like a, not a traditional, but working like a uh, common typology in museums, working with this idea of neutral skylight, false ceiling in this case, with, with, with a good proportion of the exhibition, and trying to be very neutral. Because we are expressive outside, we are expressive at the foyer, but at the exhibition spaces we are trying to be as neutral as possible. <coughs> This would be the, the main exhibition space of the first floor, trying to insist with this idea of the axis that takes you to Villa Planta, insist with this idea of to be linked with something that belongs to a higher order, and to be neutral with our architecture at the exhibition spaces. Second level, second level underground for the temporary exhibitions, where we work with the same idea but with another scale. There are, there are not too much difference between these two levels. The difference are just the proportion and the possibility of open the whole second level in order to achieve bigger exhibitions or bigger interventions. Well, we 
has kept the same. Well, this is the. And, and now we can start to perhaps to <coughs> to, to, to explain you what has happened during this this month with the with the project, perhaps because the main concept of of. Well, the main reflection with this building about the autonomy and the universality is something that I can answer by the moment because it's something that we have tried to achieve but it's not complete, it's not done, so I, I'm not sure if this is going to fulfill the expectations or my expectations. But on the basis of this project is this idea of autonomy. This idea of transmit something that goes farther than just the idea of solve the local context or solve the local problems or solve the local relation with the neighbors or with the scale. This would this try to investigate this idea of autonomy of the form and the balance and reflection of the place. Before to, to continue with the museum, I just have a, a small... I have wrote something. That sounds like an epilogue, and I think it's, it's, it works. Part of our world pursues the universals, the archetypes. Perhaps we dream of an absolute and pure architecture, but we face the world, the infinite facet of the reality that for us to decline the architecture on contextual situations, on the, on the endless variations of the unexpected, the unique, and sometimes even of the case. Mm. Exactly in this issue lies the key point of our work, to shape an architecture in balance between the desire for absoluteness and compassion for the relativity of the case. This would be the end of a normal <coughs> lecture. You know? Then I just, I just would like to explain to you, because I suppose you are curious, what have happened with with uh, with the museum during this month? We have been working almost almost one year with, with the building, trying to solve some of the problems that we had during the competition. Because during the competition, there were things that we had to solve. There were things that, of course, we needed to develop in a in a better, in a better way. This means, for example, to introduce this, this you know that we had some, some key points to solve, for example, the delivery of the, of the artworks inside the building. We have introduced uh, this delivery, trying to keep this idea of proportion, trying to keep it, I think we, we have done it, keeping the shape of the volume, keeping the shape of the space, keeping the idea, we don't have the last row, is it? I don't have the last words here, but keeping the idea of, of, of the main space like the frame and the filter of Villa Planta. We have developed the program in a, I think, in a good way. Because one problem that we had here is that, and one problem that we discovered during the development was, okay, you are doing something, putting all the public spaces underground and putting all the private spaces over uh, Overground, and this could be very restricted for a visitor, for example. So, we have incorporated an exhibition space at the first floor, for example, that would permit to have a clear vision of the circulation and a clear vision of how the building works even outside and not just only on the ground. We have solved the problems that we have with the cafeteria, for example, because during the competition we had the cafeteria. I have, a, I have to recognize it. We, we had a, a, we had a, perhaps a very Spanish idea to the cafeteria, the upper floor, with a nice terrace facing to the mountains. But when you discover the weather, and you discover the climate here. Perhaps this idea is not so nice, not so interesting. <laughs> um, so we have forgot forget this idea and we have moved. We, we understood um, during the discussions that to keep the cafeteria at the place where it is is something that works with because 
means to reinforce the importance of the garden, for example. So we have been working really during the, with this, uh, of course, working with the exhibition spaces, trying to achieve uh, even more surface for the exhibition spaces. I mean, we have been developing the project, trying to keep and to maintain these main ideas that I have tried to explain. And I think we are close to we are close to, to, to finalize all this process before to start with the works that I hope to start in. I hope not. We are going to start in January with the works, keeping the key points of the project. That sometimes is not so easy, and sometimes it's not so 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 tired to, to keep these, these key points. But in this case, I think we have we have done it. So the main idea is to start in January, in, in, in the, the mid, mid part of the month, and uh, more or less in two years to fulfill all the works and to finalize the, the building in two years. Because something that we have in our minds, in all the discussions, and that's something that we have present is this idea of this is the moment we have to do it in, in, in these two years because it's something that we cannot uh, uh, delay, or, or if, you, if you permit the expression. So what is more or less is general vision about CUR, about the museum, and the general vision about the way we work and the point that we are now like architects in our office. As I, like I told you before, I'm not sure if we are going to this kind of architects in the next years. But this process of this nine, eight years ex permits to, not express, but permits to define the, the architects that, that we are now. Thank you very much. Because the tradition, the way of working in Spain, for example, is different. It's completely different. 
I fear the local traditions, the tradition of good architecture, of good buildings, introduces you suddenly in, this, in the importance of this world. So it's very specific. It's have after cool. We, for example, we are now we are starting to do a competition in, in Switzerland too, but in the French part in Lena. And it's curious because it's something that we have now over the table, this idea of how to build it. And perhaps before cool we didn't have this vision. When we did uh, Lausanne, we didn't have this vision. That sounds very obvious, but no. But when you are a young practice and you start to do competitions and you work uh, with Photoshop, Rhino, with all this stuff, sometimes you forget this. And it's something that we have came back. What's interesting in your practice is that you are as well traveling a lot. Your projects are none of your projects in Barcelona. All your projects, or oh, yes, there's been many, many things you have been told this. And you always have to travel, you always have a, somehow to transmit your ideas to different people in different places. How do you control your projects when you are when you work? Always on this. I'm not sure if I can control the projects really. How do you do it? Well, uh, before the lecture, I was, we, we had this conversation and I was telling you that uh, something that for me is very important with, when we work abroad is to discover what means the architect in every place. Because again, it sounds obvious, but it's not obvious. It's completely different to be architect here in Switzerland and be, architect, be an architect in Spain or in Italy, what means the responsibility, what is the scope of works that you have to do, even how to transmit the ideas that you have. So there are always like, of course we always work with our local architects, with local offices that not only support our work, that we try to use to criticize and to filter our work in terms of architecture. But in the first steps, there is always this phase where you try to understand what it means to be an architect. For me, this, this is always very important. It's, like, it's a phase. It's a phase of time, six months, one year, I don't know, where you try to understand what means this. And then, what well, we have tried, the reason of this, perhaps, of this concept, of these words, is because we have tried to clarify during these years what is really important for us in architecture in order to transmit it after to the client or to the users, transmit these ideas in a clear way. That's why we use this, for example, this renderings in, in a very simple way. We don't use complex programs. We try to be clear, even with the risk to be too hard, or even with the risk to be uh, not so sexy sometimes. Uh, but because we want to transmit just clear concepts and clear ideas, because we work abroad, we can't have this face-to-face -face or this knowledge with the people, of the people, and we, we try to, to discover these key points for us. What is interesting when I followed your presentation now, we met uh, in 2011 in your office, and it was quite interesting because your, your office was filled up with models and, and, and Model shop was a very important tool in your presentation. In your presentation, we had in your office. Mm -hmm. It disappeared a bit here in, in, in this presentation. Of where is, did you move away from this kind of thing, or where is it? How do you work in in your daily process, or where is the business in your daily process? Well, we still work with a lot of models, um, but the problem is that our models are not so nice sometimes. <laughs> very quick models and, and, and well it's something that we use from the beginning for example in a competition we start working with models of course but at the same time we start with the relevance well not with the relevance we start with with photoshop uh, why because we are not so interesting about the reality of things when we start with the competitions but we use the, the Photoshop or renderings to understand what we want to transmit. So we don't like this idea of the final image that we are going to use at the competition. It is something like a surprise that you discover the, 
the night before. We try to avoid this idea of the night before. So we use the renderings from the beginning. The first week we are doing renderings because we want to discover this and work with the renderings in, with this. Try to discover if, uh, things about the material, the atmosphere. But because you have to, to discuss if it's important to transmit this black or white or color, this should be. I mean, we use the random like a like a model, doing test with randomness. But we use both. We use models, always black and white, white white models, very simple, in order to, to discuss both. I think a very important line in your work is is really the kind of question of tonality. Which you mentioned at the beginning, how to meet the tone or shift the tone of the space and how to, to develop, develop this. And another thing that's really important is this question of the public space and the public. Um, yeah. Well, about it, I mean, this, well, this is something that, something that appeared in our conversations because it was very useful at the school, for example, when we try to describe to the students what we like, really. We like a lot of different architectures. Um, sometimes uh, we, I personally didn't, I, I couldn't explain some to a student, for example, why I like uh, a building from, you know, sometimes at the same time you could like a building by Red Corpus. No? Mm -hmm. And it happens, really, in my case, it happens. And so that's what we try to, to discover, about, to, to discuss about this idea of tonality. And we try to do this comparison with a conversation. Sometimes you understand more of the conversation if you just listen. And you listen when somebody is screaming, or you listen when somebody is telling you something close to your ear. Again, again, quiet. It's like discover when you have to be Dutch, or when you have to be Portuguese, or when you have to be Swiss. It's linked with the idea of tonality. It's linked with this idea of voice of architecture. What we want to discover is when we want, when we have to scream, like in Aguilas, for example, the building is like in scream in front of the landscape, or when we just have to be shy and, and forget conversation, screaming and try to be shy. This is linked with this idea of tonality. And then the, the idea of public for us now is it's a key word that they both I think to come back your your eyes to the to the city and to reflect about the public space is something fundamental for an architect today. It's something that you have used like the engine of every project. And I we, we have to all our collaborators or to all our clients we just try to convince them about this. Space. I want to ask as well if there are questions in the public. Is there any question? Obviously not. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> okay, thank you very much mm -hmm. for the lecture and really thank you for coming and have a nice evening. Thank you.